Advisor, we're going to introduce Comcast. They're going to be highlighting right their new active core product, which is their SD WAN platform. Uh, so I'd love to bring Lee Burke up to the stage here. Or John Lozano. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy New Year. Um, wanted to come up and give some good information, but before I dive into that, uh, we have some exciting news to share. I can't say hot off the press because it hasn't even made the press. And I think the majority of everyone in here who sells Comcast, uh, um, you guys are going to like this. Um, before that, I want to take a quick opportunity to introduce my team here. Kismet, who's the director over uh, Central, South Central. Um, we have Kelly, Kelly Flores, who works with a lot of you guys down here in South Florida. Shayla Mobley, who's the newest member to our team. She's handling North Florida. I think some of you guys work with her as well. And then Mr. Lee Burke, who's the head of engineering, who came down from Philly to hang with us today. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let Kelly dive into some of our ancillary products. Uh, for those who are not familiar with them, our most popular ones are Connection Pro and Wi-Fi Pro. And we put together a little program specifically around that to motivate you guys to, uh, to push that more. So for those not familiar with that, we want to spend a couple of minutes talking about that. So I'll get back on in a minute. All right, so the products I'm going to get to talk to you guys about really quick is Connection Pro and Wi-Fi Pro. And both of those ancillary products have to work in conjunction with our business internet. Okay, so I know you all are very familiar with, with Comcast, Coax, internet, and some of the tiers uh, that we provide that allow businesses to scale anywhere from 25 megs all the way up to one gigabyte. Okay, so I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail of it. We have changed the speeds in some of our markets. Um, some of the divisions. So we've enhanced some from 250 to 300, um, a ver various changes, but in a nutshell, they range from 25 megs to a gig. Okay. So the first one is Wi Fi Pro. So all of our internet tiers come with basic Wi Fi. Okay. But the difference of the Wi Fi Pro, it gives them a lot more features and flexibility of what they want to do with that connection. So they can split it up with private versus public, and it allows them really to customize it to their liking. So whether it's um, creating a splash page and having a landing page that they want to customize to their business and give access to their, their guests. So it allows them to put promotions on there, um, whatever they want to educate their, their clients or their guests on. If it's a doctor's office and they want to promote um, the Botox special that they have going on for you know, the month, they can put it on there so when they get onto their, their network, they see that. They also can um, filter out how long they want their guests to be on their Wi-Fi. So this is very important for restaurants that don't want to have clients sitting around for two hours on their network. They can limit it and put time frames on it. They also get um, a lot of data captured from it. What type of audience is, is getting onto their Wi-Fi network, um, emails, things like that, that they can capture from, for marketing. They can also customize their name. So that way, it's just from a branding of getting onto the Wi-Fi network, they can put it specific to their business. And then it also allows them to have multiple um, access points, which is great. So if you have a, f a big facility that um, maybe the Wi-Fi is not strong enough, our standard Wi-Fi, it allows them to have up to two access points. Okay, so it allows them to kind of expand and be able to have good, good connectivity around their, their full office or location space. So it's really just uh, Wi-Fi. Um, on steroids, think of it, right? A more robust offering for your clients to allow them to, to get analytics, um, be able to market and brand themselves a little bit more than just your standard Wi-Fi that comes with our, our, pack, our internet currently. Um, so those are just some of the features that it, that it covers. And, um, and it's, it's very inexpensive. It's $19.95. So it's a, it's a very good add-on that's going to give them a lot more um, you know, benefits and features. Yes. Yes. 
So great question, and, and John's going to cover that um, as far as what's the, the latest on the press and what's coming down on that, but the answer is yes. Okay, so we'll talk about um, how that's going to work from an add-on perspective and, um, and how that'll work if you're you know, going to be selling into an existing client and doing a few of these add-ons, how it, how it gets paid to you as an agent, okay? So, but yes, absolutely, it could be added on to existing or, of course, creating it with, uh, with a new circuit. Oh. Two additional access points, correct. Correct. That, yeah, it's, it's um, I don't know, I have to look into that. That's a great question. If it's two on, on top of it or if it's one plus an additional one. I think it's a total of two. Okay. Um, and then, of course, you could always expand from there with just creating Wi-Fi extenders and stuff, but we, we, we provide up to two access points, okay? So I think it's in total, not on top of the one it comes with, okay? Yeah, anytime. Anything else before we go into Connection Pro? Yes, sir. Equipment fee, it's nineteen ninety five dollars altogether for the device. Yep, monthly reoccurring uh, charge. Yeah, it's a monthly charge, correct. Bon appetit, everybody. All right, we're going to move on to Connection Pro. All right, so this is um, a product that we launched last year, and it has really taken off, and a lot of our clients are just doing this right out of the gates when they are getting our internet connection. So it just provides them with a backup, and um, it's a 4G signal that is sent up. And it basically is just pulling from either AT&T or Verizon, whatever's the strongest um, in that area from f you know, for, the, for the 4G to work for them. Uh, it's, it basically is just, it'll con it's a continuous so that if their power goes off, if the internet goes down, it'll automatically just kick in for them and they'll be able to at least function and operate. Okay, it's not gonna operate their full entire office if they have you know, a bunch of computers and a bunch of uh, devices, but it'll at least allow them to um, run a couple computers, POS system, things of that nature, okay? The, the backup is eight hours, as Kevin alluded to, so it allows them to be connected uh, in the event, like I said, of a power outage, okay? So it's, a, it's an automatic failover, okay? And it gets set up by the technician everything you know so a lot of times clients don't even know that they're down because it just automatically kicks into the connection pro okay um, it's it I mean there's really nothing more to it it's um, it's just a great failover piece that comes out to 39.95 per month it's 29.95 for the actual equipment and then um, 9.95 well 29.95 for the service 9.95 for the equipment okay uh, let me see what else. That's pretty much it on the Connection Pro piece. Yep, that's it really. So anything from you guys on that one? Yes. Yeah, we haven't been given that information yet. Right now it doesn't. Do you know? No? Never? Never, <laughs> Never. Never ever, ever. All right, perfect. Any additional questions you guys have on that? We'll hold it to the end. That way we can continue on. Okay. Yes, yeah, so they actually get unlimited data, but the coax has to be down. So the important thing to remember about this product is that the customers cannot use it independently, right? It's only a failover solution. So but as soon as they receive the hard down on the coax, it'll automatically kick this in, and they'll have access to unlimited data uh, until the coax uh, All right, I'm sure you guys are familiar with TED Talks, right? Is everyone familiar with TED Talks? This isn't TED Talks. We're going to hold all questions until the end. Just kidding. Um, no, for the sake of time, we actually came here today to talk about managed router and SD-WAN. Um, but the sh news I wanted to share that Kevin stole my thunder um, is the fact that we're now paying on ancillary products. We're working on a deal where you can sign up Connection Pro or Wi-Fi Pro, receive a one-time 6x payment on the MRC. 
So historically, you would, you would have had to add an additional service or a line of business to get any compensation for it. Um, in this case, the product will be coterminous. If it was sold by another agent, let's say from another master agent, you could still sell into it. You could sell one of these products. You would get the one time 6x upfront or whatever the percentage is, uh, and they would continue to get paid. Not only that, they would see the uptick in revenue. So we're not going to mess with their commissions, and we'll, we'll still pay you yours. The products that they sign up for will be coterminous with whatever contract they have in place. Our belief is the more products we have in a customer site, um, they're not going to go anywhere. At least that's what we believe. So um, we're going to be around. I know we're limited to 30 minutes, so I'm going to let Lee Burke dive into what we came to talk about. Um, but afterwards, we're going to be around. So if you guys have any questions about that, please uh, come, come find us. Hey, thanks, John. Hey, um, I'm Lee, as he just said. And uh, before we get going, I want to have a question for everybody. What's Active Core? Anybody know? I bet you'll get it wrong. Anyone want to take a shot? Boy. Nope. Uh, nope. Active Core, let me kind of not give the punchline right, right away. Three quarters of the Comcast business data products budget for the last three years has been spent on Active Core. You would say anything that we're building that is, gets that kind of focus is probably pretty strategic for us. Wouldn't you agree? Well, Active Core itself is not a product. We saw something happening in the market that we thought was really interesting. Uh, we saw virtualization going on. We saw people becoming less dependent on hardware and becoming more dependent on software. In addition to that, kind of a, a momentum happened where getting gigabit bandwidth over commodity-based internet connections became widely available. And we kind of feel like this is a generational moment and we want to take advantage of that. So Active Core takes advantage of that. So let me move to the next slide. Let me give you the vision. The vision is we have lots of different services that are all in software. Maybe they're in the cloud, maybe they're in a generic CPU at the customer site, depending on what that function is. Again, Active Core is not a product, it's a platform. And again, it's a huge strategic direction for Comcast. I won't focus on this too much, but I think a lot of people when they see this slide, they have their kind of aha moment. So right now, if you think about it, you have a rack of stuff, uh, maybe a Wi-Fi controller, may Unified Threat Management, SD-WAN in a hardware box, some other rack and stack type of stuff. Well, imagine if we just had this in a, as software. And as we just moved each of those things into software, so that way when something gets upgraded, it's just installing the new software. Maybe you... Uh, you went with Fortinet Firewall. You didn't really want Fortinet Firewall. You wanted Palo Alto or some other brand. It's swapping out the blocks. That's the concept. Now, all this is not completely realized yet, but that's the concept. It's the platform. That's, that's Active Core. So I like to use an analogy to what the revolution we went through with smartphones you know, more than a decade ago. Um, in, the, in the 2000s, how many of you walked around with a separate GPS, a flip phone, maybe a Palm Pilot, maybe uh, an iPod? you know, maybe a DVD player. And these were all separate hardware devices. And now you have an iPhone or an Android device, and these are just apps. Think of that, think of Active Core being like the app store, but for networks. So hopefully that analogizes it. So let me go on and talk about our first product that sits on the Active Core platform, SD-WAN. Uh, everyone's probably pretty comfortable with the concepts around SD-WAN, so I won't uh, go into great detail. Ours has a lot of the same features, in some respects a lot better features than, than some of our competition. Uh, we can connect up to four different types of connections to our, our SD-WAN each location. Uh, of course, it could be as little as one. Uh, it can be an LTE connection, it can be internet access, it can even be NPLS, it can be VPLS, or you can kind of mix and match. A lot of our customers we find, they may have an NPLS they want to maybe migrate from or de deprioritize so they can kind of run a hybrid network where they're kind of stopping that bleeding on the MPLS and starting the growth on uh, using encrypted uh, commodity-based internet. So that's kind of the concept. Up to four different connections at a site, obviously as many sites as you want for the most part. But where we, we did something a little bit different was when you look at most of the SD-WAN solutions out there, 
uh, if you don't have an engineering degree, you probably can't figure out their digital experience. Uh, they're very, maybe very functional, but you have to be kind of like a, you know, like a rocket scientist to be able to navigate these things because they were designed by engineers. We have spent a huge amount of money and resources building a very intuitive portal, uh, very intuitive um, mobile app. And who else has Alexa? Alexa. Ask ActiveCore what the status of my network is. You have three sites down. Would you like to know their addresses? Yes, please. I buy a dot and I stick it in uh, an office with eight people and someone says, the network seems slow today. Let me ask Alexa if it's up or down. Think of all the tech support calls you just saved yourself. Uh, again, uh, the mobile app, if you go to the Apple App Store or Android Go, you can download uh, ActiveCore. It has a demo mode so you can kind of see how it works. And we also just did the same thing for if you want the URL for the portal so you can see how we blow away our competition from on this aspect of things. Pricing is very straightforward for this. Couldn't be more straightforward. How many sites do you have? Rack rate, 199 times every site. One meg, 10 gigs, it doesn't matter. That's the site price. Which hardware are you going to be using? Are you going to be using small, medium, or large? That's based on the CPU capacity. Uh, and that's the, and that's the uh, pricing for that. And obviously, you can either buy internet access from us, you can bring your own, sell it from somebody else, whatever you want to do. We connect with anything. The only restriction we have right now is it has to be in the United States and the territory of the United States. So it could be the Virgin Islands, that's the United States. It can be Alaska. Our focus is obviously, um, you know, obviously the continental U United States. But uh, from a Comcast perspective, it does not need to be connected to Comcast network. Obviously, we'd love to sell you to sell that, but it doesn't have to be. Any questions about SD-WAN before I go moving on to our, our managed router product? So an amazing thing happened. We launched our fiber-based internet access that we call EDI, as an example, I don't know, 10 years ago. Our, our VPLS, 10 years ago. Our point-to-point our -point EPL, 10 years ago. Our, you know, our uh, EVPL, which is a hub and spoke, 10 years ago. But we went to our product team and said, what about the routers? And they said, ah, you don't need that. And we're like, yes, we do. And like, nah, you don't. Well, they, after whining and complaining for them for so many years and all of you being so used to just finding other sources who sell our products uh, that we don't have routers, we finally do. And we have two different flavors of router. We have SD, standing for Software Defined Managed Router. This sits on top of our Active Core platform. And, we have, and that's our second product on Active Core. And then we have a traditional hardware router that you would be used to buying from, from Juniper, like you probably uh, be very familiar with. So let me start with uh, our Software Defined uh, Router first. This is leveraging Active Core. The applications to support this is leveraging that same Active Core platform. Uh, it uses the exact same hardware that our SD WAN hardware uses because it's just a different software load. Again, everything when it's in software is really cool. It really modulizes everything and allows us to be very flexible. So our software defined managed router, some people arguably say Comcast isn't that really single site SD WAN. Maybe. Uh, we think WAN stands for wide area network. So you could arguably say this is software defined for single site. Uh, it's not limited to just single sites, but you wouldn't have the sites talking to one another. So if you need that VPN connectivity, typical situation, you're buying our Ethernet dedicated internet, or DIA for short, and you connect uh, our managed router to the internet, kind of something you've been doing forever. Uh, you know, obviously, if you have uh, multiple internet connections, you have one from us, one from AT&T, uh, you could bring that in. We can share the same, same router. Uh, pretty straightforward. Our software-defined managed router is only, wor only works with our EDI product. I just thought I'd throw that out there. So uh, some of the use cases kind of just hit those. Uh, multiple connections or single circuit, uh, we're happy to work with either. Kind of straightforward. Hardware defined router. It's everything that you would ever want with a router. Everyone's probably been selling routers for years. We're leveraging uh, Juniper, our relationship with Juniper for, for this. Um, it, it works with any of our Ethernet products. So, of course, it can work with our EDI, Ethernet Dedicated Internet, or it can work with our ENS, which is our VPLS product, EPL, EVPL. Uh, this product can work with any of the Ethernet products or any of the networking, private networking products we have. Yes? Exactly. We do have out-of-band that we do require for that. 
Um, it doesn't have to be at all sites. It really depends on what solution you're going with, but there is out of band to be able to manage uh, a down situation. Talking about the uh, use cases here, there we go. Obvious, oops, you know, we, you don't want it to move forward. It doesn't, it does. Single circuit, obviously, you know, whether it's uh, a DIA or EDI, um, or it's uh, one of our Ethernet products, um, there, there's a scenario for that. And then, of course, multiple circuits uh, connecting everybody up. This is at a, a per site view. So if you wanted to have that layer two VPLS kind of look like a layer three type of connection, we can now support that for the first time. I know this is, you're, blowing, you're being blown away by this, aren't you? Everyone else has been doing this for a thousand years. We finally caught up on this aspect. So Manage Router, we look at it, um, you know, whether it's software defined or hardware based. Uh, software defined, we kind of already talked about that, sits on top of the Active Core platform. We have the Juniper SRX series. There's four different uh, models of SRX we're using depending on the bandwidth. They kind of fit very nicely. Uh, we actually uh, will work with Cisco ISR as well, uh, but that is on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, the one question we always have to answer if we use Cisco is why isn't Juniper working for you? Again, because we have a super tight relationship with Juniper uh, that we don't have with um, Cisco. Uh, some of the features that you can uh, that we talked about with um, with our, our Active Core software-defined based uh, internet access, leveraging that same UCP. Uh, going over the Juniper, it's our, it's uh, those high-level features uh, working with any of our Ethernet products. And of course, if someone absolutely needs Cisco for some strange reason, just knowing what that is and going forth. Uh, where we see kind of things fitting in, um, again, kind of a little bit of review of things we talked about. A scenario where you do have a... Um, uh, you would have uh, internet access. Uh, the idea behind this is that we're not creating any VPNs. It's strictly a router for internet access uh, for multiple uh, connections using a private networking product. And then we think if someone really needs mesh and VPN connectivity, they're really talking about our SD-WAN product at that point, and we'd point you in that direction. And then finally, uh, just to uh, focus on, just give you a sense of pricing for managed router, of course, this is rack rate. Um, and uh, you get a sense that our, our UCP product is uh, the least expensive one, uh, a little bit more for Juniper, and obviously Cisco a lot more expensive. Uh, let me talk to you a little bit more about vision. So right now, Juniper, we're using physical hardware. Over the course of time, Juniper has promised us that they will be virtualizing their SRX platform onto our active core platform. So at some point, maybe next year, I might be standing up here and saying, hey, we have two flavors of uh, managed router. One, all are using U, uh, UCPE, that generic hardware. One has a, um, a, you know, a, a standard Comcast load, and one has a Juniper load. Um, it's the idea that we're not using dedicated hardware. Again, because we see everything being virtualized in the future. I want to talk about the rest of these products in the next uh, two seconds I have. We have so many products that we don't have a chance to talk about, but I, I just put them up there in this kind of maze of, of products to get an idea that, you know, I talk to partners all the time and they say, hey, I want to talk to you about our products, and they say, I already know about your products because I sell business internet and EDI, but the reality is, is that there are 30, 40 products that you probably don't know about. So uh, if you don't know about all these products on this slide, you really should be talking to me or your channel manager or your sales engineer. So with that, any questions that I can answer for you? Yeah. We do. Yeah, basically, we're using VRRP to connect them together. Uh, so you'd end up with two units uh, failing over to, from one another. Yes? Yes. Uh, it really depends on the opportunity that we see for that. Um, so the answer is maybe. Yeah, it's not. It's not an absolute. Is there a reason? Uh, and, but by the way, I should add. You know, the, the the kind of the the secret or not so secret is that there is no such thing as a coax network. Um, our coax network is really hybrid fiber coax, and the reason I mention that is that 
you know, our fiber runs all over the streets, and when it gets close to where it's going to terminate, there's this device we call a node that transforms into uh, coax to go to the last couple bits. So if you're looking for diversity, you have the fiber connection going back to that splice point, aka the node. You have the coax going back to that same slice point, and then it's not necessarily on the same strand of fiber, but it's in that same sheath going back to our network. So it's not really diverse most of the time. 